Welcome to Canterbury Life for Wednesday. I'm so thrilled today to have this honoured guest in the studio, so we have to meet him straight away. Our local superhero, Flatman! <laughs> Thank I've got to shake that hand! It is so fantastic. Oh, it's, it's an honour to be here. Oh, an honour. Cool. I, I think the honour's all mine, actually, because <laughs> for me to, to meet you, a true superhero of Christ Huge, I mean, that is just the best. Yeah, well, you, you did act like one of the kids that I often go and visit as well. You did kind I? Of, yeah, you what did. Do you mean? <laughs> I don't remember jumping up and down and shouting for joy and stuff yeah. like that. Well, I think there was a bit. There was a bit. I, I think the inner child came out there a little bit. Oh, yes, it's coming back <laughs> to me now. <laughs> well, I mean, speaking of children, I was just imagining that if you turn up at a school, yeah. kids must just go crazy, let's go oh, it's, flat, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, the reception you get from kids is absolutely amazing. Um, you just, you go there and, you know, it's, it's, some of the kids don't, you know, still don't know about me and some of them do. It's about 50-50. But the ones that, that do just, um, they hang on every word that I say. They, they listen to everything. And I've, as I'm, you know, going along with this, I've kind of realised the importance of what I'm saying to these kids because they might not have strong role models or they might not have, you know, people to look up to and that person could be me. So I've kind of, you know, as every school visit I go along to, I kind of realise how important, you know, the role of being a superhero is to some of these kids. So, oh, you it, are so thoughtful to actually be thinking of what you're saying and how you're coming across. I mean, that's a real role model well, right yeah, there. Well, yeah, I never really thought of it like that when I first started. I just kind mm. of winged everything and I kind of just made up on the spot and I'd, you know, go visit kids and be like, hey, how are you doing? And, you know, tell them about what I've been doing and how they can be a superhero, you know, by being kind and generous and looking out for each other. But um, as I went along, obviously it just, I was like kind of overwhelmed with this, you know, um, what, yeah, just basically what that means to these kids. So no, it, and you just, you go out to the playground with them and you get swamped. Like there's, there'll be a, a hundred <laughs> kids, a hundred <laughs> kids chasing after you and I've, you know, run back, you know, run back into staff rooms Well, I know I'm, that you're fit and you can probably run quite fast because absolutely. I've seen your website. Oh, thank you. And, thank and you. it was so much fun just even seeing that. I mean, some people may not know who you are and if yeah. they go to your website, yeah. they will see some videos. And it, I think that those three videos that you've got on your website really highlight who you are. You, yeah. you are kind and gentle and you're highlighting that, as you said, to children. Yeah. But you're going out there and spreading lots of happiness, lots of joy, but you're also giving to people who are in need as well. And, yeah. and those videos show that. So, you know, you, you go out as a, a superhero and you leave little surprises in people's um, back doorsteps. Yeah. Or um, there was one I saw where you gave some children a present in their house yeah. and the children um, went up to their mum and went, look, look, yeah, yeah. look what Flatman yeah. gave me. Yeah, it's amazing. And eh? you've got a really cool car. Yep. And you've got a cool sidekick called Quake Kid. Quake Kid, yes. Where, where's he today? Well, is he no, going to jump he's, out somewhere? Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, I, Quake, I'm actually on the um, lookout for a new sidekick. Quake Kid actually <gasps> hung him? up. Yeah, he hung up his costume. He, oh, um, he was around. Was for, he was around for about a year. He's just um, he moved to Wellington. So yeah, he could, you know the Quake you know Quake City sort of really. Um, but yeah, he's hung up his cape now. So. It's just, I'm on my own. I'm on my own now. So, well, yeah. we'll, we'll have, have to, to put, change that. Yeah, we'll have, have to, to call out for a we think. perfect sidekick. I yeah. think Christchurch should have to, a little think well, about this. How, how do you fit in Lycra? Well, well, I, well uh, that's quite a question indeed to answer on Canterbury Life. Um, but perhaps we could talk we about may, the, um, the sidekick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, oh, I'm very keen about that. <laughs> we can do that, that Rob, later. I'll tell you the things I love. I love the fact that you will go and help families and you've obviously put a smile on lots of people's faces around Christchurch just yeah, well, by showing up, yeah, well, let that, alone anything else. You know, well, what's your favourite thing that you do? Oh, there's there's so many. Like, um, there are, you know, I have my days where I, I wonder, you know, I'm putting on this lycra costume and it's 30 degrees outside and I'm just like, oh, what am I, what am I up to? What am I doing? Like this mask squishes my nose down and it's <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, oh, why, why am I doing this? But um, I'll go out and, you know, visit families or visit a school and um, or visit, you know, sick children, people going through um, things a lot worse than I'm, I am personally. And it just kind of really humbles you and it just really puts your whole life into perspective. Can, can I ask you, did this this whole thing, your whole idea for doing it, it was because the earthquakes? Did well, they yes, it was because of the earthquakes. Um, you know, I, was, I started with students, you know, obviously because of, you know, flat man students and um, I started because a lot of my friends were leaving um, Christchurch after the earthquakes and a lot of them moved over to Australia. They um, must have been just, sad, uh, you know, apart from the 
horrible, sad events, but yeah. to, to actually have to fear well your friends. Well, yeah, it's just it's kind of one of those funny things that, you know, one or two would leave and then a whole bunch would leave and it's just, um, you know, a lot of people, there's this bad vibe about Christchurch and a lot of people bagged on Christchurch there's nothing to do and I just, I've, I love, I've always lived in Christchurch and I love Christchurch. There's so many things you, it's you can do. It's our hometown. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, um, you know, I just wanted to, Bring some, you know, change that whole vibe and make it sort of a positive, and you know, bring some joy back into the city. Thank yeah. goodness, because yeah. that, that is, I, I think that's just what we all needed. Exactly, and it's about you know helping people in a fun way, and I think that's what the costume really brought to it. it, it <laughs> when I think about your costume, there's <laughs> in one of your videos on your website, um, you do this um, Rocky music, yeah, um, montage from yeah. the Rocky yeah movie, <laughs> yeah. and the music's playing, and you're running along, and and it got to to be a certain way through, and you were running for what oh. looked like for ages. Oh, yeah. I was starting to get a wee bit tired, <laughs> but <laughs> but you need to be fit when you're a superhero. Oh, you, don't you? Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> well, you, you've I'm, got to look good in life. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. you do. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> and Christchurch loves you for what you're doing, so thank you so much. Hey, no Absolute worries. privilege to have met you. <laughs> thank and you. hope to see you again. we Will do. And we'll be seeing Jenny right after this break. Every Monday night, I'll take you out and about around the region's ANP shows from Cheviot to Tamuka. You'll meet the exhibitors, have a look at the sheep and cattle and horses, and also have a look at what people have been producing. Rob's Country Showtime, 8.30 on a Monday night, CTV. Christchurch has its very own enchanted utopia. The Hitching Post, pop in and see for yourself. A magical assortment of handmade creations, custom-made candles and artwork. Choose from our huge range of water features, garden art and imported giftware. Specialists in handcrafted metal artwork made in store. Nestled on 722 Marshlands Road. The Hitching Post. Defining art our way. The Valley and Tavern has been in the centre of Heathcote Valley for over 130 years. This new and iconic tavern is rich with history and the only tavern in New Zealand with an original artisan well. Open seven days, the restaurant offers an outstanding menu with great weekly specials such as Tuesday $15 steak nights. If you're looking for a relaxing afternoon or evening out, then enjoy the spacious courtyard and outdoor area. Also available for private functions and special occasions. Located near the Christchurch Gondola and just a short drive from Sumner Beach. Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to Staywell Pharmacy. Whatever the season, Staywell Pharmacy has you covered. As an integrated pharmacy, we stock all the well-known pharmacy medicines, as well as quality nutritional and herbal treatments. Our team of pharmacists and full-time naturopath are here to help you find the products and advice to suit the needs of you and your family. So come in and see us at Staywell Pharmacy, 27 Shands Road in Hornby. Staywell Pharmacy, live well, stay well. Our friends and family celebrate and live their lives in all sorts of ways. So it's always hard and sad with the passing of a loved one. We at Palmer Funerals know and understand this, and we believe that their life should still be celebrated even when they have gone. With our newly built chapel, we can help tailor make a funeral which is unique and personal to you and help celebrate their life while making your difficult time easier. Palmer Funeral Services, tailor-made funerals. I'm Chris Lynch. Join me for CDV's new current affairs show, Lynched, every Monday at 8.30 right here on CDV, where I talk to the decision makers and those responsible for running our city. Welcome back. We've got the lovely Jenny Boyer, is it? Boyer, Boyer that's yeah, right, Boyer. Yes, yes. Nice to meet you, Jenny. Thank you. Um, you do an amazing job, I know, with the Multiple Sclerosis and Parkinson's Society. That's right. Um, actually, I looked up your website, yes. and at the end of it, when I finally got to the end of it, I thought, jeepers, is there anything that these people don't do? You do so much. It's well, actually we, incredible. we don't do ironing and cleaning and all of that sort of boring sort of things, but well, yes, no, we do. But a, do we do provide a lot of support yeah. to people diagnosed with multiple sclerosis or Parkinson's. Well, on some of the um, pages there, mm -hmm. it showed that if you have just had an initial diagnosis mm. of it, you could have a registered nurse come and visit you in your home. That's right. Yes, she does quite a comprehensive um, review and assessment of uh, things like medications, 
other conditions, um, family situations, entitlement to benefits, and um, then does referral on to health professionals based in the community, or perhaps to one of our physiotherapists for a mobility assessment or a gym programme assessment. Gosh, there's heaps of things, aren't there? Indeed. Um, I think if I had just been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis or, or Parkinson's, I would want to know, A, more about it. Yes. But I think that the, the people who would want to support me, they would want to know things as well, how they could best support me. Do you have a sit-down meeting with um, you know, the person who's been diagnosed and family and friends at any Absolutely, time? Absolutely, as long as that's what the person who's been diagnosed wants. So it's really up to them. Sometimes people want to meet with one of our staff first and then we'll later on will include family members. But generally it's family and, um, and sometimes close friends who, who are at that initial assessment. And I think the thing to, to remember is that our staff are a little bit removed from family and friends. So they are health professionals who mm. walk alongside a person in their journey of a diagnosis. And they're that person who's emotionally not connected. Yes. So they're able to um, view things slightly differently, but uh, meanwhile offering a very professional support. Um, you actually have to fundraise quite a bit, don't you? We do, yes we do. And I noticed that you actually have a huge um, reference to, to that on the website. It actually is, um, you, can, you can actually send a little gift, can't you? There's Good. a little um, bird, a piwaka waka, and it shows you how you can give a donation. That's right, it? yes, if people want to just give a donation, a one-off donation online, they can do that but we have an extensive fundraising program to provide the services to people diagnosed with MS and Parkinson's. So how long have you been going? Oh dear, the society started in 1962, so oh, we are wow. in our 52nd year of providing these services. So we've been around for a long time, so we're obviously doing something right. Gosh, yes, <laughs> yeah. and, and how important it is too. Obviously, um, have you been in it for a while? I joined the society in 1988. In 88, so mm -hmm. you would have seen quite a progression of, of... Quite a lot of changes, yes, yes, and I've done various roles within the society, so... What's your favourite yeah. role? Um, I think working with our members, I really, really do um, enjoy that, I, I mean, I guess enjoy doesn't maybe not be the quite right the right word but it's very fulfilling and it's and it's being it's great being able to discuss and, and options with people and follow their diagnosis through well it is about people after all mm. so i do understand what you mean when you say you enjoy that because, <laughs> that's right yeah. i mean that is so valuable to to have human to human communication Const must be just absolutely invaluable for for people. We believe it is, yes, and, and our members do too, so that's good. Now, you, speaking of the fundraising, you actually had something on the 23rd of March, didn't you? It was the Scared Scriptless oh, at the um, court comedy yeah. evening. How yes. did that go? That went really, really well. Um, the court jesters, I think that's about the fourth or fifth time we, we've actually had a fundraising event with, with the court theatre. And um, the court jesters this time did their, their usual skits, and um, and we had some raffles, and yeah, we had a great night. So oh, fantastic! Good. I'm so pleased. Well, I, I hope you have um, some good successes with the World Parkinson's Day. That's coming up on the 11th of April, isn't it? That's right. Yes, yes, that's Friday. Mm. Will, will you have different events for that day? No, Another fundraising. Not a fundraising thing. It's more not for for in New Zealand. It's more to raise the awareness awareness of Parkinson's. Ah, right. I know overseas World Parkinson's Day is um, celebrated by a lot of fundraising events, but here mm -hmm. in New Zealand like we have our awareness week, so we have an MS awareness week and we have a Parkinson's awareness week which is in the first week of November. So that's where we use our fundraising opportunities, so um, it's really just raising awareness of Parkinson's. Oh well, you do a wonderful job. Lovely Thank to you. meet you, Jenny. Thank you very much. Um, and I had a chat with Roddy McKinnon. Roddy McKinnon from the McKinnon Funeral Group. Um, when I hear that 
word there, group, that does suggest that you're not just in one place. You've got a few around we Canterbury. Do. Would that yeah. be right? Annie, you're exactly right. We've got uh, a number of funeral companies that are based in local uh, towns. Uh, Christchurch, we have uh, Canterbury Christian and Palmer Funeral Services. Uh, in Rolleston, we have Selwyn District Funeral Services. In Rangiora, uh, Guller and Tyler. Uh, and also North Canterbury Cremations at Flax uh, Flaxton Park. And then Kaikoura Funeral Services in Kaikoura. Uh, down in South Canterbury, we have Geraldine Funeral Services in Geraldine. Uh, Galbraith in Tamuka and also Galbraith Mid Canterbury now in Ashburton which is our newest um, branch I guess is the right word. So yeah we have um, we have local teams and local specialists and local facilities pretty much right throughout Canterbury and into the Huronui and uh, we have this has been built up over some time but one of the big things that has sort of become apparent to us is that there's some real I don't want to use the buzzword synergy, but there's some real efficiencies to be gained because particularly in Canterbury, a lot of people have been displaced uh, for various yes. reasons over the last three or four years. Uh, the earthquake being the major one, a lot of people have moved into rest home care in, uh, in outlying areas. Uh, the Waimak district has had a huge increase in population, as has the Selwyn district. But a lot of families still have ties back to Christchurch, or they might, for example, uh, live in Kaikoura, but come down south for medical care. Uh, and there, there's plenty of opportunities or instances where they need to be repatriated back to their hometown and so we try to work with our local teams and it really brings huge cost savings to our families. So if, if people want to talk to you obviously you know it's a very delicate subject Sure. Um, and if there are extra things that happen like say um, you know like, like you were saying somebody might want to bring their uh, family member who's died back to Christchurch yes. to be buried and sometimes just being able to think of a, a question to ask and arranging all these things when you're going through grief yourself can be tricky. Is there anything that, that you yourself um, offer as a, a group that nobody else does with a funeral service that might help them through that? Process. I think transportation is a key. It costs mm. a lot of money to run a hearse and a car and a lot of companies charge a pretty high kilometre rate. We have eliminated that charge from our services. Uh, we have a standard transfer fee which we use in our sort of urban areas and we don't go beyond that fee. To say to bring somebody from Kaikoura to Christchurch or vice versa, right. um, it would be no more cost effective, uh, more expensive than if they died in either location. It doesn't matter to us because we work behind the scenes, we're always travelling, um, there's always a way that we can save you know five or six hundred dollars for families by doing that because very topical current cost of funerals and the rising cost of funerals um, mm. and this is one way that we can get some efficiencies within the team. So you're actually um, helping them through that process but also saving them some money that can sometimes be a little bit scarce, let's face it, to, Absolutely. to find at a time like sure. that. Sure, and also when we can work together with our own teams, it's more efficient for us as a business. Yes, yeah. of course. Well, that sounds like a lovely service you offer because um, obviously you, you bring a lot of care and comfort to families but when you just alleviate that oh goodness they're not going to charge us anymore Absolutely. to you know help um, our family member to come back home again to be buried and then that must help the grieving process. It does and so if people want to give us a call uh, I think the details are there available and we can happily discuss it with them. Oh wonderful thank you and speaking of those details uh, Roddy McKinnon Managing Director you can phone him on 021-687-080 or go to the website www.mckinnongroup.co.nz After the break, we do see it and we dream it. Get your own copy of the Spates Coast to Coast 2014 coverage highlights. Relive the action, recall the pain, and review the results. Call CTV now on 3777-033 and order a copy today. Avoid the monkeys when it comes to relocating. 
Trust A1 Movers, a family business since 1993 that guarantees a professional job every time. We carefully handle and wrap your valued items, ensuring they have a safe journey. Secure storage and insurance options are also available. A1 Movers, the careful, caring, moving company. Oi! <laughs> Hurst Auto Dismantlers, your one-stop shop for all your mechanical and car part needs. Our huge premises boasts a large selection of mechanical parts, panels, tyres and glass. Most makes and models are available on site, and if we don't have it, our trusted staff will do their best to source what you need locally and nationwide. So come in and see the team, or just give us a call and save time and money. Hurst Auto Dismantlers, 343 0099. Hi, Rob Coat Williams. Join me with Rob's Country every Friday at 7.30 in the evening when I take you out of town and talk about anything this country. Rob's Country, Friday at 7.30. Welcome back. We find out what's been happening this week on the internet. Chicago-based artist Justin, aka A Mechanical Mind, creates tiny steampunk insects by carefully soldering together gears, springs and other watch parts. The mechanical bugs, many of which Justin can balance on his tiny pinky finger, are miniature, multi-legged creatures that each take the artist several hours to complete. Since a young age, artist Dalton Getty has had a knack for tools. For his ninth birthday, Getty received a set of metal tools for children. This is what he believes began his love for carving and hobby for carpentry. At 24, he moved to the US where he earned an Associate of Arts degree in architecture while working as a cabinet maker. Upon graduation, he became employed as a home remodeler, a job which he continues doing today. engineering work being put to the test during the Japan earthquakes. There are more than a couple of reasons why 3D printing hasn't truly hit critical mass, and the team at M3D thinks it sidestepped them with the Micro. The Micro has hit Kickstarter with the sole intention of becoming the first consumer 3D printer that's at once accessible, affordable and easy on the eyes. Welcome back. I have got these beautiful books still to give away. If you would like both of these books, just ring Mary Ann at the desk. It's 3777033 or go to the website www.ctv.co.nz. Now these lovely books, one of them, this one here is The Survivor's Tale of the Wahine Fairy Tragedy. And I had lovely Nairi Bo and Lillian talking about um, her survival of this and how it came to her one day to express herself by writing this book. And uh, we're really pleased that she did. It's so inspiring. So that's one of the books. And the other book is actually this one, 
and it says recipe for disasters. And there's some beautiful recipes in here, but she actually dedicated this book to Michael Lee Richards, who's a wonderful chef. And uh, oh, it's just stunning. So this one and this one, if you'd like them, please give us a ring, won't you? Now we've actually got a little sneak preview for you. So if you have a look at this clip, it's a sneak preview of tonight's Zoo Juniors. And thank you very much for joining me today. I'll see you tomorrow. Over in the Brem House, the big cat area of the animal park, Keeper Petra is collecting a seven-week-old serval cat. It's his daily trip to the kitchens to be weighed. So. This little serval will grow up to be a sleek and graceful African predator. For now, he's a cute bundle of fluff, separated from his mum for the next hour or so. The keepers try to limit the time the infants are away from their mothers, but the daily weighing is necessary if Petra is to check his progress. Petra gives him time to familiarise himself with the kitchen. It seems to come as a complete surprise every time she opens the lid of his basket. In the wild, this serval would suckle from his mother for several more months, not leaving her side unless she went off to hunt. Being away from his mother in the kitchen is exciting for this captive serval, and just a little bit daunting. Playtime over and time for the scales. Petra encourages him to sit still, but she's not having much luck. For a fleeting moment, she gets a reading before he's off again. It's not good enough. He's got to sit still. Finally, one kilo, 570 grams. The serval cub has yet to be named. Once he's a bit older and Petra can figure out his character, she'll name him. He needs to be careful how he behaves. All this bouncing around and inquisitiveness is practice for going hunting. An adult serval may cover three or four kilometers in a day searching for food. So it's no wonder this little one is so lively and he's just spotted the great outdoors. Petra wants to know what he's looking at. The leaves blowing in the wind or the birds? The serval is built to hunt. He is well camouflaged on the African savanna. His ears swivel to catch sound from all directions and his long hind legs make him an adept hunter, springing on his prey, covering the last few meters in a single bound. But his claws are designed more to cope with the soft earth of the plant pot than the slippery surface of the kitchen tiles. 